So in this chapter, we will learn about services. So services are background tasks similar to services on Linux. They have no GUI and they are useful for background tasks like music, for instance. So the life cycle of a background task of a service is simplified. And if, since the, the service doesn't have a GUI, we must control it. So how we can do that? So to do that, we will have one activity with buttons, for instance, and when we click on buttons, it will launch events in order to control the service. Okay, so the, the main advantage of services is that they can be shared among various components. For instance, if you launch a service that play music in background and you swap activities, the service is still running. So there will be no interruption of your music when you change the, the activity. So, by default, the service runs inside of the process that trigger the service. So by default, you will use the same process. So this is not what you want, so we will have to handle that. And we want to have, for instance, some thread that will handle this service. So the goal of the system is to instantiate the service, run the callbacks, and the developer has to allocate resources and so on in order to make the service working properly. In Android, there are two kinds of services that are both manipulated through the same class, service, and there are bounded services and unbounded services. So for bounded services, there is a single instance and the service runs continuously. For unbounded services, the service is started and maybe later the service will be stopped. So let's have a look to unbound services for, the, for starting. So the service starts with the command unstart service. And we can see that there is a, an onCreate method that is called, and the onStart command which is received, and then the service is running. OK. And to stop this service, we just have to call the method onStop service. So what if two components require us to start the service? In this particular case, the first component will say, hey, I want to start this new service. The service will be launched. And then a second way, a second component will ask for starting a service. Since the service has already been started, nothing happens. OK? If I ask to stop the service, I stop the service for everybody. So we have to manage the things in order to, to be sure that everything is OK. So let's have a, a, a small look to an implementation of an unbounded service. So here we can see that this unbounded service handles a media player. And then we have an unbind method, but let's gi give it uh, for later. We have an uncreate method. This uncreate method will only start, create the, the, the media player, and set looping and set some options. And then on the undestroy, we can see that the media player is stopped. And the most important part is the onStart method. This method onStart will only start the media player. So here we can observe that if we click twice on a button that will trigger the onStart command, the media pillar will be started twice and nothing happened. Okay? Finally, we can see that here I return start sticky in order to continue the service, uh, to continue until the service is stopped.
Okay? So once we have done with this uh, uh, snippet of code, we can declare our service in the Android manifest file.xml. So this is quite simple. We just <coughs> add a tag which is service with the name of our service, here, unbounded service, and some options. So the Android file, the Android manifest file.xml will now handle, handle activities, intent filters, and services. Okay. <coughs> so now that we have seen about unbounded uh, services, we can have a look to bounded services. So to start a service, we have to call the onBind method, and this method will return something that is close to the notion of EPC, okay? So we will have an object that we can interrogate in order to have some result, and we don't know about the implementation. So the first client that call the onBind method will create the service. So once I have done something with my service, I want to unregister to this service and I call the onUnbind method. Okay. So now we have to deal with what's happening when the last component is unregistered, is unbinding from the service. So the first one will just unbind, but we still have to run the service since there are other clients for this service. And when the last one unbind, what's happening? The service is automatically destroyed. Okay, so let's have a small example. And to do that, I have to create a small class here, which is ID binder, which extends from binder, and this is the object that will be returned to my client. So when the client binds to a service, such this, this object will be returned, and so you can manipulate it. Uh, uh, you can manipulate it. Okay. So what does this class do? There is a private field which is pseudo random, initialized to one to zero. And every time I ask for a new ID, what's happening? This number is incremented, and then I return this number. So very small class, and now I can build the service. So I have some bounded service class which extend service. And when I override the onBind method, what's happening? I just return my ID binder. And if we have a look, my ID binder is instantiated only once. And so every client will share the same binder. Okay? Here we can note that we may have some troubles with multi uh, operations since uh, this, oper this uh, onBind is not thread safe, but you have to deal with that. So, no, we can refine some methods that are on service connected, on service is disconnected. Okay, and here I can manage the way my service is working. Okay, here I can just say you are the last user, do something, you are not the last user, do something, and so on. Here we can observe that when the service is connected, I just set up a boolean which is, is binding to true. And when the service is disconnected, I, I change the value of this boolean to false. So this is not the end. We still have to declare it inside of the Android manifest file.xml. And how we can now connect to a service? It's quite simple. We ask for the current context. And then we just call the method bind service. And to do that, we just create a new intent and we specify the name of the class. Okay, then we can fix some options which, which are bind auto create. And this is it. 
we have triggered our service. To disconnect the service, the same thing, we grab the context and then we call the method on unbind service. To call the service, I just have to grab my binder and to call the get new ID. And if you have a look, the get new ID is the method I have defined inside of my ID binder. Okay. So, to sum up, there are two kinds of services inside of Android. The first one is the bounded service. Uh, and the second one is the unbounded service. You have to manage both of these services depending on your use. But sometimes you, you may want to have a service which is <coughs> bounded and unbounded. So, this is possible since both of these services extend from the same classes. Okay, uh, services work well with widgets, so we don't have we don't have seen widgets for now, but they are useful when you have to perform some background operations, and you want to grab some result at some time. Okay, and services have their own life cycle that you can capture using the overload of the different method. We should note that uh, in the previous example, the media player didn't run into a specific thread. It should. But the media player component already has its own thread management. So when you launch a media player, a new thread will be launched. So this is why I didn't specify a thread to run this media player. Okay?